Today I want to share a really neat piece of free and open source software with you. This program, it's called Zellage. What is Zellage? It's a terminal multiplexer. It's very similar to something like GNU Screen or to Tmux. So Zellage, what it allows you to do, it allows you to take a terminal emulator, a terminal window, and divide it into panes. It basically turns a terminal almost into like its own tiling window manager. Now the name Zellage is very interesting. Uh, what does that actually mean? At first I wasn't sure how to pronounce it because I thought maybe it was like one of the IntelliJ uh, products, but it's not. It's a piece of free and open source software. It has nothing to do with IntelliJ. So it's not Zellij. It's actually Zellage. What this is, this is a Moroccan Arabic word and it means mosaic, which is actually a pretty cool name when you think about it for a terminal multiplexer. Zellage is available on both Linux and Mac for for download and installation. And if you want to test it out without installing it, which is kind of neat, they do have these commands that you can enter in the bash shell, the Z shell, or the fish shell, and just enter the appropriate command for your shell. And you can actually test drive Zellage without installing it. You can find the source code for Zellage over on GitHub. Again, it's free and open source software licensed under the MIT license. So let me switch to an empty workspace. Let me open a terminal. Let me go ahead and run Zellage without any other arguments. The great thing about Zellage, it's very new user friendly. It only takes you about 10 minutes to learn a lot of the basic key bindings to navigate around in Zellage. By default, when you first open it, you have one pane here that opens your shell, and then at the top you have a tab bar, and at the bottom you have a status bar. And this status bar has pretty much all the key bindings you need to know right here. So the very first thing you want to do is probably open a new pane. And if you want to open a new pane, there's a couple of different ways you can do this. You could do control. P for pain, and then it has a new submenu here, and you can see N for new, and that opens a new pane. But you can see I could also have done just Alt N to open new pane. So Alt N also opens a new pane. Looking here through the basic key bindings, you can see Control plus H would move a pane. So let's do Control H, and then I get this submenu, and you see I can navigate with the arrows, and I can move, I can move that up, or I can move it over to the left-hand section, make it the main pane, and then I could hit Escape. If you want to close a pane, you can do Control P for pane, and then you have X for close here. So X would close that pane. If I do Control P again to get back into this menu, you also have F for toggle full screen, so I can make that pane full screen and it gives you a hint that you're currently in full screen and that you have one hidden pane if I do control P for pane again I could toggle F for full screen and it toggles that back off. You also had a floating mode in there. I don't know if you saw that, but control P and W to toggle the floating window. You know, now we get this a new pane that is a floater, right? <laughs> I can do an LS or I could run H top in that and then control P X to close that window. Now, anytime you want to quit out of Zellage, all you need to do is control Q and it will kill this Zellage session and all the pain. So control Q just quits, gets you back into the proper shell here. Now one of the most fascinating parts of Zellage is uh, the documentation because the documentation, even though you know you have all the key bindings and everything already in Zellage itself, you don't really need to learn too much. There is a really interesting aspect to Zellage and that is configuration because you can actually make a configuration file and that's what I've done. I went ahead and created a, a little config file. They give you an example of a config file. I go into chapter five here, layouts, creating a layout, and they give you some examples of some things you can throw in a config file. That way when you launch Zillage, you give it the location to this config file and it just preloads all your panes in whatever order you want, launching them in whatever programs you happen to want as well. So if I go to some of the examples of these layouts files, uh, here is the example they give. It's just this basic layout where it opens three panes, right? It splits it into three panes. They're all just launching the shell. There's nothing terribly complicated with that. What I did is I copied that. And then if I go back into the shell and I give it the location to where I copied that file, and I place this file in .config slash zellage slash example-layout.kdl is the extension for these files. If I run that, that is an example file there, right? Uh, actually, I, I modified it in a, a slight way because I did specify in one of the panes for it to actually run htop. Let me switch to an empty workspace and I'll show you that file. So let me go ahead and open with uh, vim. 
app.config slash zillage slash examples dot layout. I'll zoom in here and you can see the layout's pretty simple. First we have layout and then opening and closing brackets pane and then a second pane. So you get, you know, the two columns, but in the second pane, you can see I split it vertically and within it, I have two panes. One is just a uh, the default pane, which is the shell, and then I have pane and then command equals htop, which gives me htop in this pane. And that is a very basic example layout because there's really nothing complicated. I'm not really launching any programs. I'm not giving any programs any arguments. I also didn't include a lot of the uh, visual bars. I didn't include the tab bar at the top. I didn't include the status bar at the bottom here, but you can include all of that. If I actually do control Q and let me up arrow and I do zellage dash dash layout and then I give it the location to this example layout file I created. And this one, I've got a little bit more stuff going on. First, I decided to put the tab bar at the top here because if I wanted to use tabs, it, it would be nice to have the tab bar and let me know which tab I was in. I, I probably wouldn't use tabs a whole lot in this because it's kind of overkill. You're already multiplexing, you know, splitting things into panes and then you have a tab with a whole new set of panes going on. But if you're one of those people that really live in the terminal, you might find tabs useful. So I put the bar at the top and then I also went ahead and added a status bar back here at the bottom. And there's a couple of different uh, status bars. There's actually a compact bar that doesn't show quite as much information, but I wanted the key bindings here because again, I'm rather new to this. And you can see in the panes, I specified launching NeoVim in one, running the LS command with various flags in the other pane and then htop here in this pane. And let me show you this example file. So this layout file, again, has a little bit more stuff in it. Uh, again, just as an example for you guys to follow along, what I did is the very first pane is actually the tab bar. So if I go back, that section gives me the tab bar here at the top. And then the very bottom pane, you can see is the status bar. So that's the status bar at the bottom and then everything in between the tab bar and the status bar are the panes inside. And you can see the first pane is running the command nvim, neovim. Then I'm doing a horizontal split. And then within that, I've got two panes. And the first pane is running the command ls and then arguments dash lah, because you can't just give a command and then some arguments inside the command. You actually have to split up the command and the arguments for that shell command. And when you do this, you can see it's command and then space and then the command. It's not command equals command. If you don't give it any arguments, then the command is actually pane command equals command. But if I was giving it an argument, there's no equal sign. And then you got to give it arguments as a, a separate argument, if you will. But this layout file is pretty easy to work with. And again, this, this is what this looks like, you know, in action. By the way, since I mentioned the tab bar, if you did want to use tabs, control T would actually create a tab. So control T gets you this tab submenu. And if you wanted a new one in for new, and now we have tab two, it just created a whole new tab. And by default, it does the same default layout. So we have tab two. If I click on it with the mouse, I go back to tab one. It's kind of hard to tell because they're running the same thing, but I can solve this problem by exiting out of uh, one of these commands. This LS command has finished. So let me uh, go ahead and hit escape. Escape drops you back into the shell. And now this is tab two. This is tab one. Now you can see that we're on two different workspaces, if you will. Now, of course, you probably don't want to use the mouse uh, because if you're in a terminal, you're going to have your hands on the keyboard to switch between the tabs in the terminal. Control T to get that submenu again and then change focus. You can see you can use the arrow keys. Also, HJKL works. So if I use um, H to go left and go back to tab one. If I go right with L, I go back to tab two until I hit escape to get out of that control tab menu. If you want to adjust the size of your windows very much like you would expand or shrink windows in a tiling window manager, you can do that with control N. Control N is resize and then H and L for left and right. So L, right, H, left. And again, escape to get out of that. So that's just a really brief overview of Zellage. I've been playing around with it for a couple of hours today, and I just thought it was one of the best programs as far as a 
terminal multiplexer I've ever used because I don't really have a need for a terminal multiplexer. I don't, because I have a tiling window manager, that's my terminal multiplexer when I'm using terminals. Plus, if I'm going to do that kind of terminal workflow where I need a lot of panes, I'm just going to open up Emacs and Emacs itself is a multiplexer, right? So I don't need a, a multiplexer inside a multiplexer if I'm using Emacs, but I do think this kind of program would be extremely useful for you guys that do live in the terminal. If you're a terminal slash Vim user, and then this kind of program makes sense. If you're a terminal slash Vim user that uses a floating window manager or a desktop environment like GNOME or KDE Plasma, you're gonna love Zellage. Now before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of this episode. Matt, James, Steve, Armor Dragon, Darloff, Daedalus, GDR, George, Lee, Matthew, Mythos, Erjan, Paul, Peace, Arch, and Fedora, Realities for Less, Red Prophet, Roland, Solash, Ray, Tenren, Roar, Gentoo, and Ubuntu, and Willie, these guys. They're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon without these guys. This quick look at Zellage would not have been possible. The show's also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen right now. These are all my supporters over on Patreon because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm sponsored by you guys, the community. If you like my work and want to see more videos about Linux and free and open source software like Zellich, subscribe to DistroTube over on Patreon. Peace, guys.